안녕하십니까? 이전치과 손영희입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Son Young-hee of Eagle Dental Clinic. This is the surgical clip of the day. As you can see in number 46, there is periapical lesion and vercation involvement. This tooth required extraction. If you look at the panoramic image, as you can see, there is periapical lesion in the distal root and it has been extended to furcation. If you look at CT, you can see bone loss around mesial and distal root. When we look at this kind of CT, the precaution we need to take is that as shown on the lingual side, the cortical bone is very hard. Because of that, when drilling is performed, it is very difficult to drill towards the lingual side and there is high possibility that the drill will be deviated towards the buccal side because there is less resistance there. We need to think of this ahead. There is difference between knowing about it and not knowing about it. This can be a bit of a pickle. If you look at this image, on the mesial side, there's gum boil and fistula tract. In this area, on the mesial side, there can be fenestration or dehiscence defect. There's high possibility of that. The surgical video is about doing extraction in number 46 and performing immediate implant placement as well as transmucosal GBR.
That was the surgical clip. Let's review the case. You can see that on the mesial side, following the fistula tract, you can see fenestration defect as shown. You can see there's perforation and bone loss. At the very top of frication, you give indentation using lens drill and use it as drilling guide, but it's very difficult to do this here. Carbide round burr can be displaced in this case, so it's difficult to use. And in order to prevent displacement, you can use low speed round burr like diamond round burr. At initial drilling point, you give indentation and then you do vertical drilling. You can minimize drill displacement in this way. There are many tools available that help us in this end, such as septum drilling kit or septum drills. You can use a diamond round burr or you can use products that specialized for this purpose. After this, you can use a lance drill or linderman drill and that will be the safe way to do drilling. Implant was placed and as shown, in order to address the buccal fenestration defect, bone grafting was done inside and outside the socket. AOS collagen was used for grafting and AOS collagen was used for external bone grafting because you can see there's lack of stability below. When graft materials are applied, it can be displaced following gravity. Block type AOS collagen with self-aggregation capability can be used here to prevent the displacement of graft materials. Membrane was adapted and two sutures were done. Previously, vertical incision was made to check the fenestration defect and here two sutures were done to close it off. This is post-op panoramic image and this is CT. It seemed as if significant grafting was done, but it wasn't. The implant is slightly placed uh, buckly because the bone here was harder. Although we kept this in mind when we performed the surgery, this was the result we got. In these cases, you need to place implant significantly lingually to get the ideal implant placement position. More so than the desired position, it has been placed more buccally, but membrane stabilization was done as well as internal and external socket graft. Hence, I think it will not affect the long-term stability of the implant nor the prosthodontic steps. Significant bone regeneration was required for this patient, so prosthesis will be delivered post-up 16 weeks. Thank you for watching the surgical clip.